One, two, three, four, get my shoes and out the door. Five, I'm alive, six, seven, eight, feeling great. Nine, gonna shine, life is good. I'm doing five, ten, gonna do it right and do it again, yeah. I look into the sky with all the beautiful color, but there's more than just for me, so gonna share it with another. I got to show, to give, let out, I want to sing and shout. Take a look and see a beautiful morning that turns into a beautiful evening. And together make a beautiful life. And if you wanna see, then come along with me, that's right. And if you wanna Welcome to Experience Michigan. I'm the show's producer, Kelsey Zimmerman. We have a great show for you today as we've really enjoyed getting out in the sunshine and enjoying all the things that we have to do here in Michigan. Now, it may be 60 and then 90 and then 60 again one day, but still there's so much going on in the Michiana area, and we have some of that for you right now. We had a chance to talk to the Hogslop String Band and find out what they're doing, including a trip to Kendallville for a bluegrass festival this weekend. We also had a chance to find out about Taps Across the Water at Dusk, which is happening in Syracuse around the lakes that are over there. But first, we sent Dave to summer camp at Camp Mac in Milford, and the first thing they had him do was their challenge course. So take a look at this. Couldn't I have just interviewed someone and watched them do it? Ugh, why is there a tree in the way here? All right. Ugh. Why is this gap so big? <laughs> All right. Oh, gosh. All right. Ugh. <laughs> You don't like have to jump into it? Hang on, let me just jump. All right. Uh... <laughs> I feel like now that I've done it once, I want to do it again without the nerves. Because now I'm not nervous anymore because it's actually not that bad. <laughs> So I'm here for the first time ever in Camp Mac, and I'm here with Gene Hollenberg, who's the executive director. First of all, growing up in Ireland, we didn't have camps like this that are so dedicated. And actually, watching American TV or American movies always made me envious that kids get to experience camps like this. So tell me a little bit about Camp Mac. Well, Camp Mac started, this, all this area that you see around here was cornfield. Okay. And the farmer donated uh, this land and a whole group of folks came in and started to create an outdoor education center for Christian education in the Church of the Brethren. So uh, do people come here for like a night or do they come here traditionally for a week or how, how do the camps really work? You know, the summer camp, um, we have three day camps for our first and second graders and then week long camps that run Sunday through Friday for everybody else third through 12th grade. So mm -hmm. we've got those programs, family camps, uh, we have a colony camp, which is a campers type camp. Uh, we have just all kinds of different opportunities for families and kids during the summer. Now, that sounds very peaceful and relaxing, which isn't necessarily the words I was described for uh, what you just witnessed on TV, me going across this obstacle course. Um, what is the name of that course? Well, we call it our challenge course. Okay, and, and there's a much more kind of deeper kind of spiritual and mental kind of meaning behind it, right? It's not, of course it's about having fun, but it's also about challenging yourself, right? That, that's part of what Christian camping and actually any kind of summer camping is all about. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, learning how to do things that maybe you didn't think you could do. Mm -hmm. And so doing it in a safe way that you, you know that, you know, I'm not gonna be injured in this process, yeah. but, but yet it still looks a little scary to go out there <laughs> and do that. And, but I'm gonna do it and when I've accomplished that, there's a sense of confidence that gets built, um, an idea of, of maybe there are other challenges that I can overcome. Absolutely. Um, and what I've realized myself is, is that, you know, when, when God, if, if that's who you're motivated and, and believed by, but for me, when God gives you an opportunity to go outside of your comfort zone, you should absolutely take it because I believe outside of your comfort zone is where you start to grow. Absolutely. And we, we talk a great deal here about just having faith and having the confidence in that faith to to know that that it's going to be okay mm -hmm. and we're going to we're going to survive this and mm -hmm. we're going to make it through and and be better for it in the end 
So say uh, for someone like myself, there's only my wife and I in, in, in our family here, because you know my family are in Ireland and hers are in Chicago. Can we come along as a couple or does it have to be based around having kids as well? The family camps that we have are available for any kind of family. So you know, whatever the configuration, we do have just some couples that come. And in fact, many of them may be some where the children have grown out of the home okay. or those who haven't yet had children. I mean, any number of, of reasons. Yeah. But also, um, we have retreats, we have other um, events that we have throughout the year that are for adults. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a spiritual retreat that we do in the winter. So, so you come and uh, you go through a spiritual growth experience with um, someone who leads you through that. And during the time you're there, you get to do camp activities. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, in the winter it's sledding and, you know, hiking in the woods and all those kinds of things. We have a summer one coming up in August. Um, that will be an echo discipleship um, program. Mm -hmm. Again, the leaders will take you through the spiritual development portion and then you'll swim and boat and mm -hmm. do all the other camp stuff. So for people who've never been to camp, what would a typical week actually look like here? Well, you start on Sunday afternoon. It's a kind of a long, hot registration process <laughs> where you got to get your physical turned in and all the waivers and all those kinds of things. But you get all that done and then um, your cabin picks you up and you start from the very beginning, learning to get to know folks, uh, doing fun things together. Um, the first night is, uh, uh, we usually have a canoe meal out here, and so the, the, the meal's in a canoe and people pick it up and we eat, we have a big campfire that night, we pop popcorn on the campfire, um, it's a lot of fun. And then you spend your days doing all kinds of things, including the challenge course that you did, um, climbing the rock wall, doing um, a low ropes course that we have, boating, swimming, hiking. We have a night hike that everybody loves. Um, all those kinds of things are fit in along with just being together, enjoying one another and learning more about um, how God cares for us. Now, I know before you became the executive director, you had volunteered for many years here at CapMac. What would you say to people who are watching this that think, hey, you know, I'd actually like to be part of that. Are there opportunities for employment and for volunteering here as well? There are. Um, we're just about complete with our summer staff now. We have, do have a couple of openings if people are interested. We have worked with volunteer counselors and program people for many, many years. We're just now getting to the point where we're hiring some counselors. Um, but we count on our volunteers and a lot of times they just give up a week each summer yeah. and come and spend time with the kids. We train you, we support you, we make sure that it's a successful opportunity for you. They might uh, give over a week, but really what they gain is uh, something that lasts with them, I'm sure, for a lifetime as it did with you. You know, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, every year at the end of the camp, it was like, this is, this is absolutely the most wonderful experience I've had. I, I, I want to do this over again, I don't want to leave. I go home and I get through the rest of the next year and about a month before it's time <laughs> to come back to camp, it's like, why did I sign up to do this? <laughs> and then we go through the cycle again. Yeah. After 40 years of doing that, it, it was always the same. And you know what, there's nothing more beautiful than spending the, the summer and your time in nature because that is, this is God's creation and the more you're outside, we're so geared towards being inside, computers, uh, very rarely getting sun on us. So to be outside, it's actually, uh, it's such an energizing way to spend your summer too. Well, it is, but you know, it's even more important right now. Uh, with the pandemic and what's been happening with kids, we're seeing a lot of trauma, PTSD, mm -hmm. um, lots of really difficult mental health issues that are, have come out of the last two years. And this is a place of healing for that because this is where you can build community, where you can um, learn to connect with God or whatever your spiritual connection is. Um, you have the opportunity to challenge yourself, yeah. to be physical, to get outdoors. Um, research shows us that um, the outdoors is a very healing place, mm -hmm. that, that when you exercise outdoors, you get twice the benefit of, of being on a treadmill. Yeah. So it, it really is an opportunity, especially for our kids right now. They need summer camp, and if it's here, that's great, but summer camp somewhere. Absolutely, you get outdoors, and for people of all ages, they've been challenged mentally because for so many people, they were so close 
to that line of mental health already before the pandemic and it really did push a lot of people over even people who were in great shape before you know so i love it i love what you're doing i love the message it feels very inclusive it feels very welcoming it feels like the kind of camp that just welcomes people wherever they're at in their journey and just trying to help them along in it well our mission is uh, camp alexander mac provides a sanctuary where people connect with god experience creation and build Christian community. And that sanctuary being the first part mm -hmm. of the mission statement is not, uh, it, it's not just a, a accident. It's really intentional. That's what we do here. It has to start with that before it can be everything else, yeah. right? Gene, thank you so much. Um, I'm so glad I got an opportunity to embarrass and challenge myself today on the course, but uh, thanks for showing me around. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, well, you did great. You <laughs> really did. I appreciate it. We'll let the people watching decide that for themselves. <laughs> thank you. Are you saying I'm doing great because I just haven't fallen yet? Some exciting stuff is going on for those who love to listen to music in the daytime or in the evenings because there is a festival happening this weekend in Kendallville, Indiana. And I have with us one of the band members for Hog Slop String Band. Thanks for joining us, Gabriel. Hey, thank you. It's good to see you. So you guys are a unique band. This is a bluegrass festival for the Northern Indiana Bluegrass Association. It's their memorial festival. And I understand they also have one of these for Labor Day weekend too, correct? Yeah, I think they do. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And you guys are going to be here this weekend. I know it's a four day long festival and you guys are going to be performing which days? We are performing on Saturday and Sunday of this weekend. So we'll be doing two, two performances each day, actually. Oh, wow. OK, that's amazing. This is a really cool festival, too, because it's kind of like a campground where people can come and camp for the whole week and just enjoy the shows each of the days. Yeah, it's great. And, and you know, it's it's the kind of festival I like to say is for music lovers. A lot of the people that do come for the whole week or for a few days, they're all pickers, too. So they bring instruments and everybody sits around and, you know, picks and plays some music, too, which is great because this is what it's all about, really, is community anyway. So um, definitely worth checking out. That's awesome. Now, tell us about your guys' band in particular. How did you guys come together to begin with? Yeah, well, we've we've been buddies uh, here in Nashville. Four of the five members of the band are all actually uh, born and bred in, in Georgia, different parts of Georgia. Um, and then one of the fellows is from Nashville originally, but all of us live in Nashville and almost all of us have been here for at least between 10 and 15 years. Um, but we were just good friends for a long time that we all had different music endeavors. Everybody did different things in the industry. And then we would just pick and play for a good time. Uh, for a long time and not really pursuing anything seriously and then just a couple of years ago the band really decided we're kind of getting asked to do more stuff than than even the other you know projects that we work in maybe we ought to take this a little more seriously so we started you know just starting the last few years really trying to push a bit more and, and getting out and running around and doing shows and uh, it is it's pretty different you know a lot of the bluegrass are old time stuff maybe doesn't have quite the same uh, rowdy energy that we do is how i could say that um, sure. and, and you guys kind of cross your genres too don't you yeah i mean we're, we're doing everything from traditional old time fiddle tunes that go way way back uh to rock and roll tunes you know and um and everything in between really um we are it's you know we're almost more of a rock and roll band that's playing fiddles and banjos and, and guitars you know that's pretty awesome. So what instruments are included in your string band? Um, so pretty much the whole lay of the land, there's an upright bass player who's Pickle, obviously, and probably the one that everyone knows the most. Um, and then we've got Kevin Martin on fiddle, Daniel Binkley's on banjo, Will Harrison is a mandolin and guitar player, uh, and then myself, and I'm doing acoustic guitar and then harmonica. So those are the instruments that we use. A very unique sound when it all comes together. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. And pretty, uh, pretty high energy, pretty rowdy. You know, that's for the style of music that we play. We feel like that's the energy that we should be playing with. You know, um, versus you know, we feel like we're carrying on the tradition there, but we also feel like the tradition was a bit more rowdy in the barn late night on the weekend, <laughs> in the library sitting down. If you know what I mean. Sure, sure. Now you guys are traveling up for Tennessee, and I know that this is the Northern Indiana event, so there's a lot of Midwestern folks from. Um, Indiana, Michigan, Ohio. So that's great that there's going to be a variety of performances. 
And as I understand it, you know, people can essentially pay a ticket price and they can stay all day long each day and just be there with the bands and play along with them if they want to, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think it's like, again, like I said, uh, this festival is like quite a few that we have throughout the Southeast that are that style of come hang out, pick, you know, we'll, we'll probably be out late night running around with our instruments, finding people to sit down and play with. And um, it's just, a, it's a great way to hang out and uh, have some good entertainment and uh, and something that you can bring the whole family to, you know, this most of this style of music is from, you know, the people from five years old to 95 can enjoy it, so. That's really great because I know for me, I have a big family. I'm always looking for what family things we can do it together because I love the arts and it's great that this is an opportunity where you can bring your family to as well then. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Well, now I have an interesting question. Your guys, how did you guys come up with Hog Slop String Band? What is the, <laughs> what's the meaning behind the name? Actually, I'm not sure anyone in the band actually remembers when exactly that name came about or how. I think it was probably more of a joke than anything that stuck. Um, but we love it at this point. Uh, we're we're, we're full-blown into into the hog world at this point, so um, nobody's actually sure where it came from. <laughs> it's been so long ago. It really before we were actually a band, you know, I mean, uh, we would we would get asked to go, you know, do square dances at people's, you know, uh, barbecue parties and things like that. It's kind of how the band started. Or, you know, openings of stores or restaurants and that kind of thing just for friends. And somewhere along the way, I think the name hog slop is what we started using somehow. So, but there's two different ways. You know, hog slopping a hog is has different meaning depending on where you're from in the south. You know, slopping okay. a hog. Okay, well, I'm from the north, so you have to explain it to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's two different ways. So, slopping a hog can mean feeding the hogs. You know, taking the slop that's left over from things that you feed to the pigs. That's called slopping the hogs in certain regions, and then also. If you're from other parts of the South, slopping the hog actually means killing and slaughtering the hog, preparing it for food. <laughs> okay, well, maybe we'll go with the first version. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on uh, what version of the band you get on what night, you know, you'll decide on which of those. Okay. It is. Now, how far do you guys travel around the country? Or where are you well, going we, to? We actually travel all over the country. Uh, we've been all over this country quite a few times, and, and we tour internationally a good bit. Um, August, we're headed to, we'll be in Europe for oh, about wow. three weeks. Uh, running around mainly to Scandinavia and Northern Europe that we'll be in when we go. But yeah, we're we're blessed to be traveling all over the world doing it. That's amazing. Well, we're really excited that you're coming here to Northern Indiana. Again, the festival itself is happening from the 26th until the 29th. It's four days of music, so much great stuff. And of course, you guys can be seeing a few of those days as well, too. So hopefully people can come on out and uh, bring their family out, camp for a few days if they want, and then get all the information on the website, too. Absolutely. I think it'll be a great time. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Gabriel. Good luck with everything. Yeah, thank you. Last year was the first Taps Across the Water at Dusk in Syracuse, Indiana. And the event was so moving that we're bringing it back again this year. And Mark, it is so exciting to hear that it's coming back because it was such a moving event. Can you tell us again, what inspired you to begin this? Well, we've had a number of people come to us and tell us what a great event it was and how moving and meaningful it was for them. So we're trying to make this an annual tradition, teaming with the American Legion Post 223 and also Matt Murdoch, our music director. Yes, yes. Can you tell us how the event was received by the community? As I said, last year we had a lot of people actually come up to me personally and said how meaningful the event was. We also had a number that weren't able to hear it. So we're going to do a better job this year in terms of distributing people around the lake so that we're sure that everybody who wants to hear it can hear it. Can you share with us again how the event um, occurs? Because it starts at 9.08 and of course it is on Memorial Day weekend, so it's that Sunday evening starts at 9.08 p.m. How do you coordinate it, it all? Well, with help from you and others, <laughs> we get the word out. And uh, this year, too, we're going to go to each of the restaurants that are on the lake and give them a heads up and say, look, at 9.08, would you please inform your customers of the event so that they're able to hear it and so they have the one minute of silence in honor uh, of the event. And then at 9.09, uh, music will be played. 
And it's played across two lakes? Three How, lakes. Three lakes, okay. It's actually three lakes. So mm -hmm. it's Lake Wallace, Lake Syracuse, and Papakichi. They're all connected here in Syracuse. So people will come out on their piers, they will come out on pontoons. Uh, there's public parks and public areas uh, here in the Syracuse area that uh, they'll be able to hear it. Right. And, and it's a moment of silence and a moment to remember all they, that really gave their lives for our freedom and for our country. Exactly. Right. Are there any changes this year, anything new? Well, as I said, there were a number of places last year that couldn't hear the performance when we played it. So we've got more musicians this year. That's one thing that we're doing differently. And again, we're talking to the restaurants and making sure that the restaurants are aware of this. And so uh, we think it's going to be the best, biggest event that we've done so far. And we want to make this an annual tradition. So this is the second year, as you point out, but we hope that every year this is something that we're able to do. I'm sure we all hope so, but there's such a rich history and tradition behind TAPS. And Matt, I'm so excited to speak with you because there really is something a lot of times we don't realize the history and how important it is to our country. And many times we as citizens of America, we really have no idea what it's all about. You're absolutely right. Uh, the history actually dates back to the Civil War in 1862. It was the North uh, under the command of General Butterfield in the Seven Day Peninsula War in Virginia. And he called his bugler aside and said that we need to do something to honor the fallen soldiers. And as they discussed this, they borrowed different things from different calls and bugle calls and came up with something new and uh, called taps and uh, permission to use it. The interesting thing is the first time uh, that TAPS was performed was for the funeral of an officer and it was during the evening and they had been fighting all day. So they, didn't, they did not want to do the rifle volley, so instead of the rifle volley they played TAPS. Interesting thing is that the South heard this as well and adopted that same tradition. And then other countries such as England and some of the other European countries adopted it as well after that. Now is TAPS still used today? Uh, yes, TAPS is used today at military funerals and also special services as well. Veterans Day, Memorial Day, Day are the two that, that pop out to me um, and played uh, at the end of the service or culminates the service after the volley. Now one of the things that Mark mentioned is that they're having more musicians this year and you really have been a part of that as well. Yeah, I just completed my 31st year in education. So, uh, first of all, educators, you did a great job during the pandemic. And since the pandemic is over, I was allowed to go back into the schools this year and help recruit. And the main thing that I do there is I talk about the history of TAPS and the significance of Memorial Day. And the students, the reverence that they sit there after I share my experience. Um, I began playing TAPS when I was 13. My dad said, as soon as you can play that, I want to get you signed up so you can play. During that time, 1977, the color guard was made up mostly of Vietnam veterans that had just returned. And for a 13-year-old to observe what TAPS can do at the end of the service, I shared it with these students and they just you could hear a pin drop. And then we shared and we, we, we shared the protocol when to play and how to play it. That is wonderful. Do you know how many local musicians will be participating this year? We are still in the process right now. Mark and I are in the process of recruiting. Uh, we are in, we are somewhere between 20 and 25 secure. I'm hoping by the time I get done next week with traveling that we could be 30 or, or maybe low 30s. If we could hit that, it would be fantastic. Well, that is wonderful. And what an honor to be able to play that in your community. Carolyn, thank you so much for joining us as well. And you have been in the Navy and thank you so much for your service. But you also have played taps in several um, funerals. I, I do whatever they tell me, oh. I'm just, you know, how it goes. But uh, I, don't, I don't do any firing, but I enjoy being a guard for the American flag. And I, playing taps is, a, is an honor. And I do get a little choked up when I play it sometimes. I, I was just about to ask you that because um, even just the sound of the bugle playing, it, it yeah. is so moving. And then knowing what the significance is of taps, I'm sure that you do get emotional when you play. It's, it's so meaningful for everybody, and especially the families. 
and it's, and it's a great honor to do it. Well, I know that you are going to play for us in just a little bit. Before we hear Caroline play, Mark, I just want to get a few more details. Again, it takes place on Sunday, May 29th, and it starts at 9.08 p.m. Exactly. And again, it's on any of the lakes in the Syracuse area, Wallace, Syracuse, and Papakichi. And um, so, we're, as I said, we're asking for a full minute of silence at 9.08 to be followed then at 9.09 .09 by the playing of the uh, taps. When do you recommend that people start to gather around the lake? Well, last year they gathered here on the lawn starting about uh, 8.30, 8.45, and uh, we found that was true at the Lakeside Park in Syracuse and some other public areas. So, you know, it's up to people how much, you know, it becomes a community event. Absolutely. I mean, that's the neat thing about it. It becomes a community event. It's just not about TAPS. It's about getting together as a community and uh, honoring those who have given their, the ultimate sacrifice. Yes. Now, for those that would like to still be a part of it and they're, they, they're a musician, there is still time for them to become a part of it, isn't there? The, uh, our website has more information, both our Facebook as well as ChautauquaWallacy.org, and you'll see those on the screen. Um, but that would be a way to find out more information and get the most up to date. This will go on rain or shine, so if the weather happens to be inclement, um, it's still going to go on. Okay. Well, thank you so much for bringing such a moving event to our community. We really appreciate it. And Caroline, we just want to thank you ahead of time for playing TAPS. And for those of you watching right now, let's all just also take a moment of silence to honor and remember all of the soldiers that gave their lives so that we can enjoy the freedoms that we do. Well, that's it for today's show. Thank you so much for being with us. Remember, if you're out experiencing Michiana and you find something cool, post about it and use the hashtag Experience Michiana on Facebook and we'll find out about it that way too. Or drop us an email and we'd love to hear from you. Well, until next show, have a great week, everybody. Experience Michiana is made possible in part by the Community Foundation of St. Joseph County and the Indiana Arts Commission, which receives support from the state of Indiana and the National Endowment for the Arts. This WNIT local production has been made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you.